Hey gang, this is Shannon Scott with uh, Bonaventure Cemetery Journeys and the Bonaventure Cemetery Facebook page, and I'm here with uh, these two handsome, striking fellows in uniform. And we guys, tell me your names. Or, <laughs> yes, my name is uh, Ron Coates. I'm uh, a reenactor with the Eighth Georgia Infantry Company E, based in Savannah, Georgia. Very good. My name is Robert Kale. I came under my great grandfather. Uh, Whatever he was in. He was in the interesty. Uh-huh. Okay. Cool. The and 25th. The 25th. And if you'll just kind of tell me a little bit about your purpose out here today and what you guys are honoring and ceremonial, cer being the ceremony of, I guess. Yes, I've been asked to uh, come out here today uh, to provide um, information on a very, very distinguished heroic soldier during the war between the states, Captain Nicholas B. Clinch, who is a... Uh, uh, he was at Fort McAllister in 1864 during Sherman's attack uh, as the Union forces uh, attacked Fort McAllister, which sat on the Aguchi River south of Savannah. Uh, Captain Clinch uh, was in command of a, a company of artillery, and um, he uh, was in a hand, involved in hand-to-hand -hand combat, uh, wounded 11 times six bayonet wounds, three saber wounds. One of the saber wounds, which was used as a, a when I say saber, a sword, uh, actually fractured his skull and two gunshot wounds. Wow. Uh, the fort was attacked uh, on December 13th, 1864, around five o'clock in the evening. Uh, 230 Confederate defenders manned the fort against 6,000 Union infantry. As you can possibly ascertain, they were quickly overwhelmed, uh, the defenders were. But Captain Clinch uh, fought heroically. Uh, one might say that he bit the dust that day, but that was not the case. He lived through that. Uh, wow. He was visited by a Union private the very next day in his medical cabin. Uh, due to sheer exhaustion, due to loss of blood, he, he fell on the field of battle. Six horrific bayonet wounds, three saber wounds, and two gunshot wounds. A young lad visited him in his cabin and uh, due to Captain Clinch's bravery, his heroism the past day, uh, the previous day, the young lad said, I have prepared a special suit for you, having killed a squirrel that I'd like to share with you today, if you would so honor me. Captain Clinch said, of course. They ate sumptuously, uh, and then shortly after, the young Union private left tearfully, praying for his uh, wounded foe. Uh, he told Captain Clinch that he inflicted the bayonet wound, one of the bayonet wounds on him, in order to save his own colonel's life. Um, subsequent to that, uh, Captain Clinch remained at uh, Fort McAllister for a short while. Then he was transported to uh, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina, where he remained in a Union Field Hospital until uh, he was sent north to uh, Fort Delaware, which was a Confederate prison for Confederate officers. He remained there until July 15th, uh, 1865, until he was uh, released and the uh, company of his brother. He was escorted back to the old plantation home on the Satillo River in South Georgia. Uh, he never really fully recovered uh, physically from those wounds. However, he lived uh, until uh, age 55. Uh, he was never married, and it was often reported amongst men throughout the command, throughout our camps, that through childhood, through adolescent, through adulthood, all the way up until the time of his death, Captain Clinch was never known to have reported a falsehood or ever told a lie. Uh, he was one of the most bravest officers in, in both sides uh, during that conflict. He was a man of impeccable t character and integrity, and may God rest his soul. Thank you very much. Wow, thank you. Wow, a, a history lesson, and I feel really honored to have, have learned at Graveside. So thank you, gentlemen, for your time. You're welcome. This is Shannon Scott with Bonaventure Cemetery.